the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Bless the name of the Lord. Lift up your voice and bless it. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Can you lift your hands and honor him? You deserve all praise. We bless you for who you are. We bless you for that which you have done. Hallelujah. In one minute, I just like you to say, Father, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for that which you have done in my life. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for bringing beauty and glory out of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Cry for revelation tonight. It's a communion service. Lord, give me understanding. Give me revelation. We open ourselves to the influence of the spirit of revelation and understanding that we may comprehend with all the saints the length, the breadth, the height, the depth of the love of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming around. Tonight is a very powerful night. It's a communion service. And I want you to be very, very sensitive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I appreciate everyone. Please permit me to appreciate two great people. I'm Sin Tokumbo. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you, sir. And Pastor Jakes and his lovely wife. Let's honor him. Thank you so much. Every other person, I love you. God bless you. Walk up to three people. Tell them it's Good Friday. Prophesy every bad thing out of their life this night. It's Good Friday. In the name of Jesus, it's Good Friday. Hallelujah. Please be seated. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the privilege that he has given us to share on this night and I kept thinking truly speaking and trusting God for grace that we will understand the significance of this all over the world um, this day is being celebrated some ignorantly some with understanding some emotionally but the most important thing is that we are taking our time to acknowledge Jesus and I just thought to share a few things um, with us that I believe will bless us and then prepare us for the communion. The first thing I want to talk about is eternal life. I just want to talk about a few things tonight. Um, more like a charge to build and prepare our hearts. The reality of eternal life. The Bible says this is the testimony the record that god has given us eternal life write this down the word eternal life um, is not a very accurate communication but um, it was the best that the translators could do because the word eternal is not a very good rendition everyone has eternal life everyone has everlasting life are we together now everyone created by God doesn't matter whether we fell from whatever the fact that we came from him 
satisfies the condition to have eternal life that's why when evangelists preach they don't say will you spend eternity the question is location not the possibility everyone will spend eternal life the idea of death as we know is not cessation from living is the translation from one dimension of existence to another and that translation comes with certain possibilities if you are with god then it's called life everlasting if you are apart from him then it is called death but that does not mean you will not live again are we together the idea of what we know to be everlasting life is from the greek word zoe please i want us to understand very simple exposition but will hold the key to our victory eternal life is a kind is a quality the idea is not another life the idea is an all-surpassing life in quality like you go to buy stuff in the market and they tell you this one is fake or generally for everyone and then they take you into another room and they say there is another one if you have the money they can bring it down so eternal life is not one of the many lives this is what you need to understand eternal life is a quality of life that has sustained within it certain possibilities that only in christ would they manifest being in christ is the secret to activating that life is a life pregnant with possibilities and the nature of that life is such that the possessor of it should be like god are we together so whoever by any means can have access to that life there is an implication that that life should cause in you it should begin to produce certain effects that reflect god if by any means a plant has that life that plant will start behaving like god are we together if by any means a handkerchief possesses that life that handkerchief will begin to behave like god enshrined in that life is capacity to release all the multifaceted possibilities that are in god it is god's own life it's not an inferior type so when the bible says this is the record that god out of his benevolence has given us zoe a class and a kind of life then the bible says that that life is in his son so the condition to possess that life is that you must accept the son outside of jesus there is no possibility of sustaining such a life now there are other kinds of lives that you can access you can access a life assisted by the realm of the spirit it may not be eternal life are we together now i can go to a native doctor to program a mystery in a charm and aid me to live a life that is higher than the normal human life so i will be able to demonstrate possibilities that may not be affordable to the natural man but it still is not eternal life so we're not talking of any life that is above the human life there are many kinds and quality of lives and living that are above the human life but are not god's life are we together when you meet a rich man although it's all human life because of the quality of what he or she eats and the children their health and the possibilities that come with the kind of life would be far different from someone who eats once a week once in two days are we together now when you meet someone who um, has had access to certain drugs that can aid vitality you would find that whether they are supplements or whatever it is there is an advantage that those provisions create to such a person that will reflect in the quality of his life from another so when jesus is talking about eternal life it's not a cadre of lives and then his own is the highest no no eternal life is a class of life incontestable and incomparable with any other it's a class of life that reflects who god is he programmed all the possibilities in him like a software and encapsulated it in that life so that whoever receives that life receives potentials potentials 
notice my choice of words receives the potentials to reflect all that are in christ and all the possibilities that are enshrined in the person now many christians come to give their lives to christ we come out for an altar call we recite all kinds of things like many will be doing shortly but very few people pastor jakes really understand that kind of life are we together and not understanding what we have received will shortchange us and for many people their idea of eternal life is we only received an escape from hell which will be useful one day so for now let's keep it and go back to our normal life at death it becomes activated that is the idea that many people have about what we call eternal life so they say are you born again they say yes what they mean is i got that thing that saves me from hell but it's somewhere hidden i will keep living my defeated life and then if for any reason death comes is the trigger i bring it out as an escape are we together now the bible says whatsoever is born of god the word born of god is if it is god that introduced the seed that gave birth to it has in it it says overcomes the world not because of the possessor but because of what is inside the possessor of that life whatsoever is born of god has capacity to overcome the world and it says this is the victory that overcomes even our faith that's something i'll be discussing shortly so eternal life is not life after death eternal life is god's life that grants a man ascendance to release the possibilities of god here and now are we together it is important that we understand this it will reflect in the quality of your life and it will reflect in everything the moment i give my life to christ brothers and sisters the bible says listen to me carefully it says that i have been called as a result of that initiation out of every tribe out of every tongue out of every nation and by implication out of the limitations that come with those systems are we together let me tell you something about eternal life eternal life is a fact one of the tenets of the christian faith is the fact that when a man declares the lordship of christ over his life he is a possessor of eternal life it's a fact there are many tenets what we call the pillars of the christian faith number one of them is that salvation is only through jesus christ you have to know what you believe salvation salvation is only through jesus christ the bible says there is no other name under heaven given to man by which men must be saved the first tenant of the christian faith is the exclusive authority of christ to be the only one to bring men to the father no prophet no priest no apostle no prophet no religion no sect can claim to route you through another path to the father the bible says no man cometh to the father except by me the authorized medium to access the father and the life of god is jesus christ you are not a christian if you don't believe this number two salvation is by grace apart from works the second tenant of the of redemption the christian faith the pivot upon which everything we receive is salvation as far as receiving the life of christ comes it is by grace through faith and not by any ritual the word works there does not mean no action that's not what it means there is an action your faith is an action are we together the works there gives an idea of ritualistic activities i don't have to slaughter an animal i don't have to go to the mountain in israel to bow my head i don't have to face the sun or face jerusalem all of those ceremonial rituals have been ended the bible says christ is the end of that law not the end of action the end of the law are we together now there are three dimensions of the law not all of them left you have to understand this there is the revelation of the law 
that is the revelation of the character of God. That will never change. It predated the law. It, it will never change. The universality of God's character is consistent. Whether from the Old Testament, the New Testament, the soul that sins will die. Nothing changes it. Grace only intercepts it, but that reality is still a fact. Are we together? Number two, there is the ceremonial activity of the law. That has been abolished. The observation of sons, observation of festivals, and, and so on and so forth, in a way to know God, is been abolished. Are we together? Number three, the rituals. The rituals that men practice in an attempt to atone for their sins. So when the Bible says Christ is the end of the law, it doesn't mean that the coming of Christ changes the character of God. The universality of God's character is a fact. I am the Lord, I change it not. Are we learning something tonight? You have to understand the tenets upon which you stand. That number one, Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. Number two, that justification by faith is an act of His grace. You must understand this. It was an activity that no man could qualify to even participate and help God. So he had to do it by himself. The only responsibility of the believer as far as the impartation of eternal life is concerned is to believe and act by faith. According to Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 and 10. It says, who shall ascend to heaven and come? He said, the word is nigh thee in thy heart and even in thy mouth. The word of faith that we preach. Right? That if you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, the Bible says. And with the mouth, confession is made unto soteria, salvation. So justification is by faith. I don't come to God with a goat. Hoping that if, if any priest asks you to come with a goat, you see that he's not, he's not practicing all of that again. Are we together now? very very important number three the third thing you have to understand is that the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the life of God the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the life of God it is in the office of Jesus the Son to introduce you to that life but the personality that holds that life within you is the Spirit of God and that only in partnership with him will you have capacity to release the possibilities in that life it's called the fellowship of the spirit you must know this if you want to walk as a believer the Holy Spirit represents the ministry of Christ now every time the Bible says in Christ it means in partnership with the spirit that hails from him I can do all things through Christ in partnership with him the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the life of God and the one who makes it possible to release the potentials there listen to me very carefully you can be a possessor of the life of God but not a manifester of the possibilities contained in that life there are two different things possessing eternal life by confessing Christ is a fact has nothing to do with your feelings but walking experientially in the reality of that life has to do with your partnership with the Holy Spirit so he says grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge first Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness listen carefully according as his divine power hath given us how many things all things that pertain unto life and godliness that all things was shrouded in a mystery called Zoe, brought by the Holy Spirit. His very presence is the proof of Zoe in you. He's the witness, the spirit of adoption. Are we together now? And then the Bible says, but they are accessed through knowledge. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, it says through the knowledge. Here is, here, here is the big confusion in the body of Christ through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue the next verse says wherefore has he given us these great and exceedingly precious promises that by them 
by releasing them we may prove experientially that we are partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so i have eternal life but that eternal life is a possibility potentially speaking is at work in me it will never stop the devil from buffeting you but in partnership with the holy spirit manifesting as various things including the spirit of revelation that paul prayed for in ephesians chapter one he was talking to people who were already born again but were not releasing the possibilities that came with that life and he says for this cause for as a as a token of my desire for you to walk in these dimensions i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of revelation wisdom revelation in the knowledge of him that your heart although has received eternal life that it be flooded with light are we together now then he says that you may understand the power that was exerted when he raised christ from the dead etc etc so i can be born again you can be born again but the reality of the implication of that life may not find expression that's why the bible says it is by grace available by grace but accessible through faith listen carefully available by grace but accessible through faith and the word faith there does not just mean believing the faith there is a summation of every partnership that you have to go through in satisfying the condition to release that so grace provides it faith hallmarked by your obedience releases it this is the equation of the believers work if it's not available by grace it cannot be accessible so when we partner with the word of god we are not ignoring the grace of god we are receiving it our obedience is a token of our reception it is available by grace but received through faith so when i tithe it is not the law i know that my prosperity and open heavens has been available by grace but my obedience is a proof that i'm interested in seeing it work in my life god cannot assume you are interested you he gave you a will and your obedience is partnering with your will so working out your salvation is not the law it's called partnership it's called koinonia it is the token of your expression it is the token of your interest to god that you want to see everything in him find expression in you zoe the life of god received by many experienced by few received by many experienced by few there are many possibilities that are enshrined in that life number one the bible tells us it's an indestructible life maybe let me finish what i started saying before we discuss a bit i was talking about certain pillars are we together the fellowship of the mystery that comes through partnership with the holy spirit number four the reality of righteousness righteousness Kenyon defines righteousness as the ability to stand before the presence of the father without a sense of inferiority condemnation and guilt um i i agree with that except for the fact that righteousness is another name given to the nature of god the very nature of god at work in a human is called righteousness not just an ability to stand that is the effect of righteousness it's not righteousness the effect of righteousness is that the possessor can now stand blameless but that's not necessarily the definition are we together now righteousness the nature of god at work in me the authorization to be able to access his spirit righteousness number three number what number five is that in christ and christ alone is dominion a possibility in christ and christ alone is dominion a possibility 
please understand this this dominion thing people chorus around as if they don't need god without god dominion is a mirage dominion means exercising sovereign power over situations over circumstances and over the forces of darkness write it down dominion the ability to exercise sovereign power sovereign authority over situations over circumstances and over the forces of darkness is only a possibility in christ every other thing outside christ is negotiation and pacifism not dominion are you hearing what i'm saying if a herbalist tells you he's trying to drive a demon it's not dominion through the mysteries of the kingdom he will pacify the spirit it's called occultic pacifism that's why the demon can be angry again and say the sacrifice is over so you have to renew it but dominion is exerting sovereign control anytime any day and remaining there not renewed by anything listen there is no sacrifice in the village that is done once and for all are you hearing what i'm saying everybody come on this is africa talk to me africa there is no sacrifice that is done once and for all whether you are aware or not somebody goes somewhere smuggles himself into a shrine and renews it can be per annum can be per two years or can be per when the gods are angry when they start manifesting the priest will now say the gods have not eaten and you are eating so people begin to die and what happens they slaughter a child or an animal and pacify that's not dominion that's negotiation that's not dominion bishop Oedeko calls it a far above mentality that's dominion where you are in a class that potentially speaking you don't have any reason to relate with the vicissitudes here and if at any point it comes listen let me tell you something about eternal life eternal life listen carefully eternal life is not a life void of challenges but it's a life assured of complete victory now thanks be to god who always always not sometimes now thanks be to god who always causes us to triumph The next time you say that you have the life of God, don't think you are saying you have a designer watch, a designer shirt. No. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, through the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Listen. If I give you a millionaire's ATM and I say, look, for some reason for just trusting me, I reward that trust by giving you an ATM. Potentially speaking, has more money than you will need in your life. This is recession. So an example with money is a very fruitful one. It will help people understand. Are we together? He gives you an eight year. Are we together now? But for some reason, you have to be trained to know that that eight year is a fact that there's money inside. It's a fact that potentially speaking, you have access. Now, you may move around with your friend that you used to eat with before. It does not stop that the fact that you are a current possessor of that ATM. Experiencing the possibilities, someone must be introduced to your life or a document must be introduced that is a map that guides you and says, stand before a machine, the name is ATM, and you slot it and you are patient. The dynamics of the operation this is where knowledge and understanding comes and you can hold that ATM forever and stand and swallow saliva in front of a shop that the ATM can buy the whole shop are we together now now you are crying to the one who gave you the ATM and he's saying I have made available so out of his love giving you the ATM is enough but he sent someone to come and guide you but that person is so gentle it will take your cooperation so he says look we created this atm it's not like they gave us we understand how this thing works and he say no 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 no. i went to school just hold on when i am difficult this is what many people do 
so you hold this ATM for years and Satan comes around and tells you this thing is only a small card and he says it's a small card put it in your pocket and you put it in your pocket and move around this is what makes Christ look weak in the life of men this is what makes the word of God look like it is of non-effect so in spite of the fact that this reality is a fact knowledge of the systems of God the provisions that have been made in place everything we do in the kingdom is not adding to what Christ has done is accessing through partnership the mysteries of the kingdom that releases those possibilities so that after five years of working with God my life should be able to reflect more of God now than it did five years ago not just in terms of finances and all of that in terms of ascendance in the spirit I should not fear five years later what I was afraid of five years before I should not be a victim five years later of what I was a victim of before. No. I prayed for a gentleman here. I believe he's here. He was in the school of ministry. He had a dream. And somebody appeared to him in the dream, punched his hand, and he woke up physically with a punch with blood. Many years before, would look at it and say, Hey, this is a serious issue. And go and shout like fools around. But when I saw it, I said, I want to touch it. So way. So way. This is not the issue of prayer. There is an implication to the life I hold. Let my the life of God make contact with that infirmity. Zoe, God's life. Possessors of divine possibilities. I want you to take away, take your eyes away from your challenge if you want to believe this. Because that's what Satan will use to mock you. You are a possessor of that life. Why are you barren? Five years. Don't mock yourself. And then you say it's true. Uh -uh. There is still a provision because to make sure that you release this life, he still gave unto some apostles and prophets. And look at all the provisions he put in place. He gave you his life, gave you his spirit, gave you his word, sent gifts in the body so that we are not without excuse. If you fail, you neglected the systems of God. You neglected his life, so you go to hell. You neglected his word, so there is no growth. You neglect his spirit, no direction. You neglect the gifts, so no lifting. Anyone that fails in life, listen to me, is not God. He neglected the systems, the life of God, the spirit of God, the word of God, the gifts that he has sent. Just like there are people here looking at me who have never been interested in the life of God. The life of God is the most superior reflection of his love and benevolence. More than giving you a pastor. More than giving you a prophet and apostle. More than giving you the Bible. More than giving you whatever it is. You have to receive them in that order. You don't receive his life. Even if you receive his prophets, you will not maximize your stay. The prophets can only assist as guided by God. They cannot impart life. A man of God can impart every other thing aside from eternal life. I can impart healing. I can impart an anointing. I can prophesy to you and your life will change. But I cannot say be born again. I can even stand before God to declare your sins forgiven. Right? In terms of the limitations that stand between you. But that is only a possibility in Christ. Please, I want you to believe this. This issue of being born again is not a choice. It's not a choice. People buy phones now. Their phones get missing and they cry for days. Because owning a phone now is almost not a choice. Let's institutionalize salvation. Let's make it part of the fabric of growth. To make it look like you don't say, okay, if you want to, you want to, you better come out. Whether you know it or not, you want to. Are we together? Eternal life. What you believe about Jesus is important. You must believe that he came from heaven. If you believe he came from Israel, you are not saved. You are not a child of God. There is a footballer called Jesus. He cannot save men. He can play football, but he cannot save men. Please, let's clarify these loose ends quickly before we continue. There are things you have to believe. 
Jesus himself said in John chapter 6 I am the bread that came from heaven he told us his location that he came from heaven you must believe that he came from heaven number two you must believe in his incarnation his incarnation is the mystery that made the world flesh the womb of the woman is that mystery the mystery that made the world the eternal word that was with God John 1 verse 1 become flesh many Christians don't know this you must believe in the incarnation not reincarnation incarnation if you believe in the reincarnation of Jesus Christ you are an antichrist incarnation incarnation the word became flesh number three you must believe in his humanity he didn't just come and die and went away he walked upon the earth partook of the weaknesses of men there is Jesus the man he walked upon the earth the Bible says he was in every way like us tempted yet without sin if you don't believe in the humanity of Jesus Christ you will shortchange yourself from walking in the fullness of the life of God you must believe in the dominion he exerted by means of the presence of the Holy Spirit in his life not by means of being Jesus the Son of God when he came upon the earth he stripped himself of his Godship and submitted himself as a model to the ministry of the Holy Spirit so every result gotten in Jesus life was not because he was Jesus it was because he was under the influence of the Spirit so that we are not without excuse the same Spirit that made Jesus the Christ is the same spirit that will make Jake the Christ is the same spirit that will make Ejimi the Christ is the same spirit that will make Joshua Selma the Christ believe in the humanity of Jesus he demonstrated the sovereign power of God flawlessly above creation above principalities and powers he demonstrated to us in his earthly life that Zoe is a possibility are we together you must believe in the passion of the Christ. Theologically speaking, the entire event that took place beginning from the upper room, the communion. Where they received the Holy Spirit was where they had the communion. Are we together? Down to the experience in Gethsemane. Down to Pontius Pilate and Herod who used Jesus as a scapegoat to become friends they were enemies but Jesus look how powerful Jesus was even before he died he reconciled enemies then you must believe in every activity the mystery of the whip for by his stripes we are healed the mystery of the crown of thorns that was put upon his head an exchange for our dominion restored you must believe in the mockery that he received you must believe in the fact that he was on his way to Golgotha, the place of skull, as an exchange for us. Jesus did not die on the road. He was hung on a tree. It was necessary that he had to be crucified. If Jesus died and it was not by crucifixion, he would not be able to take the sins of the world. There are conditions to be able to take the sins of the world number one you must become flesh number two your blood must be sinless number three you must enact a mystery that transfers the sin of men to you and that mystery is called the communion the communion is not what christians take in church the communion is a sacrament there's a theological name for it. it is called the doctrine of interpenetration the mystery with which two people become one is what is used in marriage two separate entities by covenant still different personalities but one in the spirit and that is enacted through the communion john chapter 6 are you getting blessed tonight john chapter 6 let's read help us media let's read verse 35 okay just for time's sake let's run to 53 just four verses 53 to 57 john chapter 6 53 Jesus is speaking now then Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you he's introducing them 
to the mystery that will make the sins of the whole world come into him you have to understand it's not just that he died for us we died in him so you need to find out how we entered him because galatians 2 20 says i am or i have been crucified with christ not just that he was crucified for me are we together jesus died for me that's an act of love i died with him that's identification there are two different things it's not just enough to believe he did it for you you must believe that you did it in him that's why we are seated with him but we must trace where the journey started verily verily i say unto you except ye eat of my flesh listen carefully ye eat of the flesh of the son of man and drink of his blood what will happen to you ye have no life you are living physically but you are not a possessor of my life now to eat the flesh and to drink the blood is a mystery there is a prophetic act called communion a physical prophetic act but it's a language remember hosea chapter 10 right hosea chapter 12 i have spoken to you by the prophets i have used similitudes similitudes is in the character of god to use similitudes what we call prophetic act a foreshadow an um, adumbration of something physical like he told moses to leave the rod and that rod is christ so it's in the character of god that's what i mean by the universality of his character is consistent both pre-old old new testament post new <laughs> hallelujah 54 who so eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath zoe there is and i will raise him up at the last day 55 for my flesh is meat indeed now this sounds like occultism so you have to understand my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed 56 he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth aha he's now switching the parable for you to understand that he's not necessarily talking of physically eating he's talking about a condition of intimacy that can be likened to eating and drinking prophetically adumbrated by a physical activity to eat the blood the body and blood of jesus is not just to eat things no it is a dimension of intimacy that begins by accepting and receiving him so he says dwelleth in me and i in him eating and drinking is an adumbration of a system that gets you into christ and gets christ into you last verse as the living father had sent me now listen and i live by the father do you know what that means that means i ate and drank of the father so i now live in the father that same system that made me to live by the father it says so that he eateth me shall also live by me listen are we you are intelligent now jesus is saying the father gave me his life and he called how he got that life eating and drinking and he said the same way i ate of the father's life that means i ate of his flesh i drank of his blood to have his life so also that means we must understand how did jesus receive the way number one he was born of the spirit of the father understand this he was born of the spirit of the father number two he was empowered by the spirit of the father number three he walked in obedience to the spirit of the father these three conditions translated to him eating and drinking he released the reality of the fullness of the life of god everybody look at me communion is more than bread and wine if your experience at communion stops at just eating bread and drinking wine you are carrying out a religious activity that is powerless the eating and the drinking only becomes powerful 
on the strength of your understanding it is your understanding that releases the life are we together that means hi hallelujah every day of my life i can be eating the communion when i do the i eat the communion certain things happen many of them we are going to look at it the bible says that we testify and we declare of the lord's death how do we declare of his death we died with him we are alive that means my being alive is a testament that he is alive when you understand all of these facets of this communion then you will find out you can release the possibilities that come with it healing breakthrough an invocation of the mystery of mercy I can spend all night talking about the mercy of God. The mercy of God is a mystery that starts with sinners but is needed in the kingdom otherwise we will not attain that height. Mercy is a mystery in God that vetoes judgment in your life. It has nothing to do with whether the judgment is legitimate or not. The moment your life is in a situation where on legal basis the devil should prevail over you what you need is the application of the mystery of his mercy are we together remember when david took a man's wife are we together now david was a man who loved god he took a man's wife killed the man and when he had a man's wife a particular prophet came his pastor came and gave a parable he started with a parable and gave a parable a parable that reflected that a man bullied a man and took something and david said who is that man and he said you are the man you are the man do you know what happened the bible says immediately david repented and sought for mercy and i think it was abner his prophet he said ah the lord has shown you mercy and you will not die meaning the price for that thing was death if david did not invoke the mercy like saul he would die too so david did not become an heir to the throne and then a predecessor of jesus because of perfection the difference between him and saul was mercy there was nothing saul did that david did not do the difference was mercy mercy is only available in christ mercy is a mystery that satan cannot give mercy is a mystery that pastors they can pardon but they can't show mercy we interchange the words mercy is a mystery mercy is not to be excused mercy is that they pay for you so you enjoy the freedom but at the expense of someone else's there are few men who can show mercy they can pardon you but mercy does not take away the price it only exempts you hallelujah tenants of the christian faith unshakable foundations that will make a man remain in christ doctrine will rise and fall denomination will rise and fall technology will introduce sex and rise and fall but after many years you will still be standing let me tell you if you ever fall in your christian race it's not because satan prevailed over you it's because your foundation was shaky when you don't know what you believe that make up your conviction the day you meet with somebody who is an intelligent professor who studied scientology he will sit with you and use quantum physics to wash away your intelligence and make you look at jesus and say i never knew you were you were um buddha's mate it's just that you came ahead of him every religion acknowledges jesus but what you acknowledge him as makes the difference you acknowledge jesus christ as a carpenter's son it is true but you are still going to hell are we together now yes I believe in him and this is what I believe about him this is what the devil when he comes to your life he probes the dimensions of your convictions Satan is not a fool he doesn't come to attack men when he came to Jesus he started throwing questions the questions were testing how far 
and he found out ah every dimension there was a word basis that word did not come by mistake he went to the temple from age 12 he had been learning he had been building when satan comes to your life he will begin to throw issues around your life to find what dimension of spiritual reality has not become spirit and life to you that becomes his access point to your life satan cometh to me so he will come to everybody but he did not find meaning there is a possibility that he can find listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters you need to sustain an orientation in the spirit that defies every assault of darkness for instance the bible says while we look not at the things that are unseen but the things that are seen so if the devil wants to manipulate your senses to make you look like if you are truly in christ don't mind this stupid joshua selman and what he's saying if he's really in christ why is a and b and c happening the happening in your life does not change the fact that his life is in you Our eternal destinies are determined by the, whether or not we are possessors of that life. But the qualities of our lives on earth are dependent on the extent of our partnership through faith with the Holy Spirit in order to release those lives. So if I look at a man's life and his life demonstrates a dimension of spiritual possibility that is not in my life, aside from other factors like the election of grace and other things, it must mean therefore that there is a dimension of partnership he has sustained with the Holy Spirit that I've not been able to come into it. That's why a family can have five people. Their father can be a pastor, but the extent of their results will differ. Are we together now? Listen, when Jesus walked upon the earth, he was very specific with his actions he intended for certain things to be understood about his work on earth that's why he had to reveal himself to paul to document these mysteries although the disciples saw him when he resurrected he still was with them 40 days and then left them 10 days in the upper room to receive the holy spirit but even in the midst of that he still had to anoint a man paul of tarsus saul who later became paul to be able to articulate the mysteries Paul calls it the fellowship of the mystery. The fellowship of the mystery. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians 1, 2, 3 that we are alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Alienated from the life. Are we together now? Not experientially walking in the fullness of that life. Listen, tonight as we prepare to receive the communion, I want you to come to terms with certain things. Number one, you must have the brokenness and the unashamedness to admit that if there is anything in your life that is yet to reflect the fullness of Christ, it is not because of a limitation posed by God. It is that there is a dimension of partnership with the Holy Spirit. Are we together? That has not yet begun or has not yet come to fruition for you to experience that dimension. You are only authorized to receive results if you can maintain that posture. That my life and your life today is not a reflection of who God is, but a reflection of how far we have chosen to walk with Him. It's an uncomfortable truth, but victory starts from that standpoint. Either He lied, or there's something wrong on our own part. Are we together? So if there are witches appearing every night, destroying your life, you sleep and somebody appears. Now listen, let me balance something. To deny the existence of that possibility is another dimension of foolishness. This is what sometimes we preachers do. We say it does not exist. No, it exists. You can only be exempted. You can't stop it. Satan still has authority over the systems. He's still the prince of the power of air. He's called a prince. The spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience. For a season he's still allowed. What happened is that God created a mystery that exempts you. Causes are real. They are still at work. Yokes are real. They are still at work. They will still attempt you. And until your knowledge bails you out, 
knowledge of what the systems of the kingdom bails you out you will still be a victim of them so when you come to me as a man of god and say sir somebody came in the night and slept with me i said that's nonsense no you are not being accurate you may have ascended a level of understanding that exempts you from that experience but to deny the existence of that thing is a joke what i can do is i can introduce to you what christ gave to conquer it hallelujah you have won the victory lift your voice and sing unto him hallelujah you have won You are the reason king. You're seated in majesty. Seated in majesty. You are the reason king. You are the reason king. Hallelujah. My life and my experiences are too small to limit everything God said about Zoe. If I live my life today dying of sickness, dying of failure, my life cannot be a model enough to say this is all that is contained in God. And I must have the unashamedness to admit that my limitations are not caused by the inability of God to produce that result. It's been encapsulated in the way. It should be a challenge for me that there is a dimension of understanding through the ministry of the word, the ministry of the spirit, and the ministry of his body. We are members of his body, not just his spirit. We are part of the body and the body as an entity holds possibilities. So I can love Jesus Christ, but I may not have been taught that part of his system is the introduction of apostles and prophets that can speak over your life. That can make me walk barren of the possibilities of God. But when I study through the word that there is a provision made like that, then I can align myself to that provision and now begin to walk in a new reality. Tonight is a night of brutal admittance. We have to come to a point where we admit that, listen, my father has not gotten a job for 20 years. My mother has not gotten a job for 20 years. It is not because God cannot release jobs. It is because there may be a dimension. Either they have refused to receive his life, partner with the spirit, understand his word, or discern his body. These are the causes. These are the things that are responsible for the limitations of people. So what we are doing tonight is not why you will be healed. What you are understanding now is why you will be healed. This understanding is what gives life to the wafers. The person who made the wine you are about to drink may be somewhere. You bought the wine. He was doing business. The person who made the wafers you are about to eat, he may even be an unbeliever. He just had that Christians eat this thing often. And he said, this is a stream of income and produced it. So you are eating somebody's value. You are not eating power. It is your understanding that translates that mystery. Like water turned to wine. Between the water and the wine was a word. When a word came, it turned the water to wine. It is that word, that understanding that will turn bread to his body. And the drink to his blood. Color does not matter. Whether the color is green or blue. It's only red to affect your psychology even if this is what you take it is your understanding in the kingdom power is released through understanding not just motion you tie it is not the money that brings the power is the understanding that gives life to the activity that's why jesus said this is how you will build and the gates of hell will not prevail upon this rock the rock is not peter the rock is a system upon this formula you will build never speak outside of understanding so the system is that you first understand then you act when you act out of understanding you are building upon a rock when you act void of understanding you are building upon sand 
the sons of Sceva showed us a graphic example of that they spoke but there was no understanding and he said Jesus I know he built upon a rock Paul I know he built upon a rock but you are just speaking that means you come and eat because you heard that Bishop Oyedeko blessed communion and people took it and all of a sudden people were vomiting animals and then you take it and as soon as you take it as you are getting home the same spirit comes again because it's not the ritual the understanding is where the power lies so Paul I repeat Ephesians 1 for this cause it's not enough that you have received the way for this cause I have to go the extra mile to bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you that the Holy Spirit may reveal himself unto you as the spirit of wisdom and understanding so that you will know epignosis come into an understanding not awareness come into an experience where you and the information has become one when you understand this then you take that step and you find out that life is now released some of you because of this you will not even be able to hold the communion cup because you are now holding it now with understanding the demon that oppresses you has seen the light understanding gives life to the symbol remember the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding when that light comes that's what releases the power ordinarily you would have carried it and eaten and said can, can i take another one you see why paul rebuked the church in corinth they were not discerning the lord's body a time came when many of them started using the communion for alcoholism because they did not have a system of preserving this thing so they looked forward to communion services communion will always remain and then they didn't just take a little this thing this is just for social reasons and then to guide people financially but then you could have a big cup and fetch so there were people who would fetch and go and hide somewhere they didn't believe in jesus and they would drink and paul found out they were getting tipsy in the middle of an outpouring and paul said no you people should come we need bible study something is wrong you guys if you are hungry that's what paul said if you are hungry do what go and eat in your house don't come to the lord's house and violate his temple by eating he said for this cause this is it for not discerning for acting foolishly out of understanding many are weak many are sick many do sleep when was the last time you saw written in the grave of a man that he died because he didn't discern the lord's body they say he died of cardiac failure for this cause so if i want to improve my life it's not all up to god the way is at work it's been available by grace but my partnership i must check the systems i'm ignoring i am ignoring the life of god like some of you are doing looking at me now not born again when you see people talk about get born again, say, forget about them jared they are just hopeless people after all so, so, so sociology said religion is the opium of the masses that guy may probably be in hell now be careful are we together now hmm. don't 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 listen to junks you can write it and pass your exams but when it comes to your eternal destiny you must be serious you have rejected his life or you have rejected the ministry of his spirit you have rejected the ministry of his word you have rejected the ministry of his body these are the provisions made i want to ask you a question tonight which one have you rejected you can easily know it by looking at your life you have insulted every man of god you know by saying look forget it i insult every man of god we can all go to christ you have accepted christ you may have accepted his word but you have rejected his body there is a consequence a bitter one they are taken for a prey and none say it restore the bible tells us that there is a system with which god built his ecclesia the church he said christ is the chief cornerstone immediately you meet christ he introduced two ministries called the apostles and the prophets they are the foundations of the church if you do not meet them your building cannot grow the cornerstone is there you ignore them you build nonsense it's a system it's an election of grace 
which one have you ignored some of you have ignored have supposedly admitted the ministry of the holy spirit you like power you don't doubt even if somebody jumps up and hangs in the air you like it but you have ignored the ministry of the word thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path that illumination that comes through his word you have it pay attention to what i'm teaching tonight you have ignored that boundary of revelation and you will find out that there will be a lot of charismatism around your life and you will know which one is witchcraft and which one is of god because there is no compass there is no the word of god is like a buffer solution it defines the dimensions of the operations of the holy spirit so when you are going out of it the word of god guides you and says no every manifestation must be consistent with the character of god there are people who have embraced supposedly the ministry of the word the bible calls them men who have come around the baptism of john and ignored the ministry of the holy spirit acts 19 remember have you received the holy ghost since you believed verse 1 and verse 2 they says we have not even heard whether there be any holy ghost and paul was surprised they were believers disciples going through bible study he said unto what then were you baptized they said the baptism of john and paul said no the baptism of john was a baptism of repentance to the end that they should believe on he that should come even jesus christ and when they had it the bible says they were baptized in the name of the lord and paul laying his hands on them they now received the ministry of the spirit of god right they prayed in tongues and prophesied the bible says they were about 12 of them acts chapter 19 1 to 5 thank you very much so it is possible to believe the bible just because you inherited it from your pastor but not walk with the spirit jesus died to make all these systems available his life in us exclusively given through the office of the christ but released by the interaction of that believer with the spirit of god the word of god the body we teach a lot about the word of god we teach a lot about the spirit of god but we ignore his body christ is the head he's not a head moving around that head has a body and he acknowledges that the body is part of himself and then in another mystery he calls that body his wife you don't ignore a man's wife and leave, and then he will laugh with you the bible said jealousy is the rage of a man so as you insult his wife simply because the wife is wounded are we together if a jimmy's wife has an injury and you say because of that she's no longer a woman a jimmy will stand close to her first before he will give you a slap you say by this little act let me prove to you that when i said i do i meant it i also said i mean it so the man of god may not be perfect but he's still part of the system when you criticize him you are criticizing somebody's wife and that man will react are you hearing what i'm saying for this cause i've taught it here go and get the teaching on the body of christ i told you the mystery of receiving from the body of christ was adumbrated in the parable of samson samson went to the philistines and he gave them a riddle he said out of something weak came something strong and they could not decipher the parable he killed a lion and then bees did not know where to go and put honey they went to a carcass and put honey there meaning if you must enjoy the honey you can endure the smell so you come to a man of god who is temperous but look beyond the temper there is an anointing there is always honey in the midst of the carcass this is the mystery of discerning the body you have to ignore the limitations that are in people so if the pastor does not look like you you may see him a yopi person and babs as if he's, he's some of these touts around this these vegas guys he may be that may not be the best but the truth of the matter is that he may be anointed the woman may dress and she may be careless you know like i was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and i told them i went for a program and there was a woman of god who was introducing something and kai i'm not somebody who talks about dressing but mm -mm, even till today it's too much it's, it's not it's not she didn't leave anything to the imagination very bad for a congregation very bad for a congregation i say it again very bad for a congregation anyway it happened but the fact remains that the woman was very anointed 
can you endure the smell because the honey is there it's a mystery how the bees endure the smell to pitch it there there is this treasure let me give you the new testament translation that treasure is hidden in the bible didn't say in vessels in earthen vessels so you may not like me as a person but why don't you look beyond the limitation and see that there is a treasure that's why there is no church that cannot bless me if you search for jesus you will find him i've ministered in all kinds of places i remember when we were coming back from ekiti when we met some of the the the, the men of god that prayed for us pastor jakes they could not speak yoruba that's enough to annoy me say so what is all this i'm the one who needs the miracle i need long life that baba cannot speak english but is walking in an experience of a reality what do you think we did we look for an interpreter there has to be an interpreter we found an interpreter who came and the man said we should kneel down now i have received jesus christ i am walking in partnership with his spirit i have received of the word but i discerned his body i would have said i'm a man of god i i was going for a crusade it was a powerful crusade mighty miracles and on the way we stopped and the man didn't even say you are pastors say kneel down first. really that's what he said and in yoruba he was just praying i didn't hear one thing he said but all i know is that that man was long he was living long enough for me to cover that grace which part of god's systems have you ignored please hear this message tonight is the answer to the prayer that demon that has oppressed you you have quoted scripture that's very good it's true that you are working with the holy spirit but your knowledge is limited but there is still out of his benevolence he has kept an anointing with a vessel one word go will set you free of 10 years of limitations but we will refuse and say look i know jesus christ by myself so you limit god's possibilities to only the revelation that the holy spirit and the word is permitted through your willingness and sometimes your lifetime may not afford you the dimension of revelation it takes for the result you need so you must tap into every channel that's what he meant when he told nicodemus you must be born of the water and the spirit otherwise you cannot enter you can see it but you will not enter seeing the kingdom is that it has come to you but entering it is becoming a testament of the reality so you can now say since i was young now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken no that thing was not a poem to be recited by everyone it was a man's testimony based on a dimension of possibility you have to make it yours before you speak otherwise you will keep mocking yourself this is what these unguided confessions that are not out of understanding will keep mocking us if ye are abraham's children you will do the works of abraham what was his work he believed god god told him something god said abraham i want to introduce a dimension to you i have not done to anybody and abraham believed god tonight is easter all over the world there are cathedrals there are ministries there are crusades packed full with the over two billion christians on earth attempting men of god there are tapes rolling all over churches right now every man of god attempting sincerely to reveal something that the people can take back about easter i brought to you a reality the bible says this is the record it was documented god has given us eternal life but this life is in his son and whosoever has the son has that life but grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge according as his divine power half not will half is a fact giving us giving us giving us every limitation in my life and your life is a revelation of something about the systems of god we have ignored or are still learning and have not come into that fullness when you know that you put an urgency to your pursuit for god for the more i know you 
The more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. For the more I see your face, the more I want to see you, Jesus, more of you. Shortly we are going to take the communion. Please those relevant people, let's station them. There are three mysteries that the Lord revealed to me that will be open to us tonight as we partake of the communion. Three. Number one, the communion tonight is an encounter with the spirit of revelation. We need revelation in our lives. We need revelations in our lives. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. We need revelation in our lives. The limitation of my life and your life is not dependent on Satan. It's dependent on how far I can access the dimensions of the possibilities that the life of God can provide based on the knowledge that I have. His life only gives you potentials. Your partnership, accurate partnership makes it an experience. Tonight as you partake of this, let something boil in you that all men are equal in Christ but they are not equal in possibilities. Our possibilities are determined by the truths we have chosen to receive and the dimensions of the systems of the kingdom we have comprehended. And so we must press. Hear what Paul says. He says, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press. There is something I need to know about death to stop being afraid of it. There is something I need to know about poverty. There is something I need to know about restoration. There is something I need to know about fruitfulness. The love of God is revealed when we study his systems. The Bible says the invisible things of God, right? The invisible things are seen they are learned they are taught by the things that appear so i look at and say what what kind of a man is this that grants me access to his life sends his spirit to me causes men moved by the same spirit to document more information the apostles did not have a bible all they had was the torah right the pentateuch the five books of moses but now god has gone the extra mile for our generation because he knows evil and wickedness will increase and he has left a document to still help us and then in addition to that he has empowered men and women in the body so that we are not without excuse and what a joy the lord has spoken to us this year that is our year of triumph that means we can work with these systems of the kingdom when I was studying, I was just studying the passion of the Christ tonight and I was so touched looking at everything Jesus went through. Just for me, just for me, Jesus came and did it just for me, just for me. Just for me, Jesus came and did it just for me. That's what he did tonight. Well, the cross will always represent the love God had for me. When the Lord of glory heaven sent. Gave all on Calvary just for me, he just for me. Jesus came and did just for me. So, what is the implication of tonight? I remember, I remember his sacrifice while he was on the way to Golgotha. The Bible says that there were certain things in the mind of God and Paul was giving access to those things. 
they were encapsulated in a document and Paul calls it a testament and then Hebrews chapter 9 Paul is speaking pastor Alpha read it there Jesus knew that those things would be activated only at his death so they were prepared and when he died there was still ignorance and he started moving through holy men to document these things to say now you have access I have died for every will is not yet activated until the death of the testator Jesus died if he did not die eternal life will not be a reality he hung on that cross between two thieves a 33 and a half year old man naked there was no covering no he was naked and he looked at the world that he came to die for and the people yelled crucify him let his blood be on our children they were prophesying something that would really happen because his blood had to be on their children for them to be saved what was a statement of war was a prophecy let his blood be upon our children they didn't know that was why he was on the cross they mocked him let me tell you something Jesus did not go to the cross as Jesus he went to the cross as me and you when he stood there he saw me he saw Joshua Selman he saw Koinonia remember Acts chapter 2 they were caught in their heart and they said men and brethren what do we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive that promise for the promise is unto you and unto your children and to your children's children he says as many as are afar off which the Lord will call this is where we came in in Acts chapter 10 reading from verse 38 down to 44 the Bible says the moment the Holy Ghost fell on all they that had him day of the circumcision the Jews said ah I perceive truly we now see that God is no respecter of persons but that in every nation whoever calls upon his name will be saved tonight we are taking the communion number one access to the spirit of revelation according to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 I bow my knees and I pray for you O church of the Lord Jesus Christ that I desire you to release the reality of Zoe that life that is indestructible that life that is far above principalities and powers the life that is capable of demonstrating dominion here and now the life that is characterized by victory the life of meaning the life of fulfillment the life of purpose but it's access through knowledge the spirit of revelation number two the second thing that the communion will release to us tonight is reenacting that covenant of life through that prophetic act that we are going to be doing the bible says he that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life do you know what that means there are many things at work in your life now that were not sponsored by that eternal life watch this my body as designed by God is supposed to grow through a system there should be a symmetry and a synergy correct if a boil starts coming out from here that boil is growing not at the same pace with my body now biologically they can say something is responsible but spiritually we know that another life is responsible so the result of that another life I see it different from my body so what you do is by the mystery of the communion you are taking it to your physical body physical flesh and blood it's a mystery that reminds the devil that every part of you was handed over to Christ that means whatever is not a derivative of the life of God put it scripturally every tree that was not planted by my father meaning there are other farmers are we together there are other what farmers for instance while men slept an enemy he's a farmer the bible says he came and sold he's a farmer and left whether that sleep is a spiritual sleep psychological sleep as a result of the weight of the vicissitudes of life fatigue several things happening in your life and you did not know 
and it weighed you down or as a result of real physical sleep the activities of darkness listen as you take this i want you to discern the lord's body don't just to discern the lord's body is not to eat slowly to discern the lord's body is to take it with understanding it's not that you close your eyes you take it slowly no 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 that is religion to discern the lord's body is that as you are taking this truly speaking this is wafers this is wine but the, my understanding authorizes the holy spirit to form an eclipse between that that activity that dinner thing and me and as i lift it is the same thing as the servants who were carrying water while they lifted it the distance between his word and your mouth causes a miracle to happen this is what will make somebody hold it and just the distance from the table to your mouth you can't stand it an anointing responding to your understanding that's why somebody can take the communion and all of a sudden you feel you just took something small that before it got to your stomach a lot of itself was hanging around different parts of your body but all of a sudden you take it and you are already feeling fire on your leg did that thing get to your leg it's a mystery you only gave him space tonight can your communion be a body that you have prepared for him we have prepared a body remember a body has thou prepared without a body he cannot move so the communion just like the human body can become the body tonight that communion can be the hand that heals you tonight that communion can be the mystery that destroys the devourer for your non tithing and God can say, I give you a clean slate, start again. Tonight, that communion can be a reversal of several things. If you take it with understanding. Are we together? So we are going to pray. But before we pray, overflow one, overflow two, by the road, those online, from any nation and any place you are listening to, the first key is to receive the life of God Zoe the life of God is not Christianity Christianity was a description given to possessors of that life God is not initiating you into a religion he says come on to me listen there are people seated here looking at me inside and outside you are tired and you're saying apostle as I stand right now sincerely I don't even know what my life is about I have tried like the worship team sang I've done everything but tonight I am in all humility lifting my heart and my hands and saying I need that life my father refused to receive the life my mother refused to receive the life my brothers and sisters refused to receive the life I choose to receive that life and there are yet others who may say at one point I came for an altar call but sincerely I don't know the name of what I did I only know that they said congratulations and they gave me hamper I ate what was inside but nothing entered me and this night I want to eat of my the bread he said my bread is my body is meat indeed for in the sanctuary God Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary, God is here. Wherever you are, just wait till I start counting before you come. I'm going to count one to five because of time. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, as I sat listening to you, I knew that I had to be sincere with myself and I knew that I have to win this war. My life does not reflect Zoe in any way. Number one, I have not even received it. Every time I hear preachers talk like Saul of Tarsus, I mock them and I say they are wasting my time. But tonight, I want to win that war. And number two, there are others who said, well, I know that I came and confessed something. For a while, I was even walking with God. But sincerely, I know between me and God right now that I'm not serious with Him. And I don't want any pretense again. 
wherever you are the holy spirit is already speaking to you overflow one two wherever you are i want you to make your way here i would have asked you to go to the overflow outside but there is a reason why i want all of you here so as i count one to five there are people there i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain leave your seat and come out here right now if you are ashamed of your friend you are ashamed of your brother you are ashamed of your sister then you are wasting the mystery of easter start coming one god bless you leave your seat and come don't be ashamed clap for them koinonia appreciate them as they come god bless you keep coming that flows from help me see Emmanuel's faith keep coming lose all their guilty strength the third mystery that you will receive tonight from the communion is an empowerment for a strange order of dominion please don't forget these three things don't forget these three things number one access to the spirit of revelation number two an exit of everything that was not planted by god there will be mighty mighty miracles and deliverances as you take this number three an empowerment for a strange order of dominion the centurion said for i am a man under authority i say unto one go and he goeth i say unto another come and he cometh speak the word only the bible says where the word of a king is there is power that as you partake of this communion something will come upon you the bible says that when you take it right first corinthians 11 when you take it that you announce you declare the lord's death the meaning of that is that you tell principalities and powers that the person you used to know is not the person now jesus died and i died in him and now the life that i live i live by the faith of the son of god another system so way god's life now this is what we are going to do i'm going to give you two prayer points we are going to pray seriously and um everyone outside you don't have to come there are the first overflow at the projector there is a provision like this the second overflow at the projector there is a provision like this and then in here we did it because of time now this is all you are going to do those here you would come this way just take the cup and the bread drop the cup there and march this way those here you will do the same thing and then i think there'll be a provision here at the minister stand so that we don't have chaotic things please some of you will fall under the anointing as you do it just be careful and let's just coordinate them i want to pray and bless this now and then we are going to pray the moment you partake of it you go back and find a corner and begin to blast in tongues and pray these three things in your life that's happy Easter for you you have to pray it with all your heart and say lord i understand this mystery let my understanding permit the life of god to find expression prayer point number one lord i believe i believe but in case i do not believe help my own belief lift your voice and pray whatever is not of faith is sin lift your voice and pray pray inside and outside pray inside and outside Are you praying? Help my own belief. Emmanuel. 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 Your name is called. 
Emmanuel, your name is called Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. point number two Lord as I partake of this let the mystery of the communion be enacted in me whatever this represents I permit it to work in me lift your voice and pray seriously inside outside those online get bread and get wine or water get something that represents the communion Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen. I want to pray for the communion. 1 Corinthians 11 from verse 23. The apostle is speaking and he says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, listen, that same night which was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me 25 after the same manner he also took the cup listen are you seeing the order so you take the bread then you take the cup he took bread and said eat then he took the cup and he says this is my blood of the new testament do this as often and then he says 26 for as often as he eats this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he comes now he says for this cause verse 30 many are weak for not partaking of this with understanding many are weak many are sick and many among you sleep meaning if i partake of it with understanding among other things it should destroy weakness it should destroy sickness and it should destroy death that's the next prayer point lord weakness sickness and the plague of death any kind of death it lives my life now lift your voice and pray your voice and pray victory victory over sickness weakness death hallelujah hallelujah now please agree with me I want to pray I tell you I sense such a strong anointing in this place I'm praying here at the projector stand everywhere those online regardless of any nation just go and get something water wafers food whatever is just a token who can stand against the Lord no one can no one will who can stand against our King no one can no one will oh
Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ father tonight I stretch my hands prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ upon this communion this is ordinary wine and wafers but Lord we command it to lose its earthly significance now and take on a heavenly significance and Lord I pray using this as a point of contact to every other communion set around the world connected to us now I decree and declare that this becomes a type and a shadow a similitude of the body of Jesus a similitude of the bread the blood of Jesus Christ and Lord I pray that as we partake tonight we access the spirit of revelation as we partake tonight every stranger in our life must go immediately and Lord as we partake tonight fresh fire for dominion and triumph in the name of Jesus therefore Lord we declare this blessed we call it blessed right now I put the word of God upon it and I declare that it will produce miracles in the name of Jesus God bless you please start coming start coming quickly worship him help us let's just have some people come and stand open it up and then
Nadau kaka sunangka Ubaengi jika isayabo Nakir mama sunangka Ubaengi jika Nadau kaka sunangka Ubaengi jika isayabo Nakir mama sunangka
Quickly, 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 quick
your name be glorified. Hey, you are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. Oh. You are the Lord. Let your name Let be glorified. Name be glorified. You, are the Lord. you are the Lord. Let your name, Let your name be, glorified. be glorified. I say you are the Lord. Are the Lord. Let your name. Let your name
you know be mad oh you know be mad now you be god oh now you be god almighty god almighty god you know be mad oh 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 now rekele now rotito Hallelujah. Lift your hand. Something is happening to you. Something serious is happening in your spirit. Lift your hands. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and we, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Hallelujah. Right now in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I command a baptism. You have taken something in your body of the spirit of revelation. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. That fire upon you. Illumination. By the mystery of communion. Step into a new dimension of light, of illumination. I command your spirit man to comprehend with all the sense, the length, the breadth, the height, the depth. I call your spirit man rise higher, a higher dimension, a higher dimension, a higher dimension. Mantles are falling here tonight. Mantles are falling here tonight. Mother kites are rising from the gates of the church. The us are rising from the gates of the church. For the kings to be born, for revival to be born, for revivals to be born. For the kings to be born, Ali Ali oh, Ali oh, Ali oh, Ali Ali oh, Now listen to me. Any stranger in anyone's body now, whether by covenant, whether by sickness, right now as I speak, let the mystery of the communion speak now. I command judgment, every sickness, blood disease, covenants, right now, every tree not planted, help that lady, by my father. Let it go now. Let it go now. Terminal diseases, yokes of delay, limitations. I command it to give way right now. I 
I tell you, there is a strong impartation in this place. I want to activate upon you a grace. Listen, the Bible says, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. Rule thou that they may come against you in one way, but that an unction from the Most High can be upon you and scatters them a thousand ways. The Lord has declared that it's a year of triumph. You are about to receive something that will make you run like Elijah. I pray for you. The mantle of strange dominion. Strange dominion over principalities, over circumstances. Take it now. Take it now. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Take it now. I release that mantle. I release that grace. No limitations. No limitations. Breakthrough. Dominion. Breakthrough. In business. Breakthrough. In career. Breakthrough in academics I command it by the spirit of dominion hear me anyone here who is a man of God you are in any kind of ministry may an unction for kingdom authority let it come upon you right now take it now take it now grace kingdom authority Take it now, dominion. Let that fire rest on your ministry. Let that fire rest on your church. Let that fire rest on your assembly. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that everything Jesus died for and is not yet manifest in your life from tonight, I give the devil no rest. May your eyes begin to see the salvation of the Lord. May your eyes begin to see the salvation of our God. I pray for every family represented here and I prophesy enough is enough of every demonic assault therefore tonight by this communion I release judgment I release vengeance I release judgment I release vengeance I release judgment I release vengeance Whoever has partnered with darkness to keep your family bound this night as Jesus died in exchange may the earth open and swallow them may the earth open and swallow them the kind of results that your hands have not handled I pray for you that in the next 30 days as surely as the Lord lives by the mystery of the death of this Savior of us step into that dimension of results step into that dimension of results hallelujah buried with him in baptism we died with him and when we resurrected, we resurrected to a new life. Whatever makes the reality of eternal life to not speak in your life, I decree and declare right now that that barrier is broken forever. Finally, I pray for you. The anointing to bring others to this experience, the unction to walk in the reality of the life of Christ, 
to walk in healing to speak breakthroughs to people i stretch my hands upon you like the dew of heaven let it fall on you right now let it fall on you right now let it fall on you right now right now is yours take it let it fall on you right now like the dew of heaven the unction to demonstrate the kingdom the unction to demonstrate the kingdom i release it for you right now pastor alpha shared the scripture we're rounding up the moment jesus died the bible says and graves open and graves open and they that had been dead some of them for years i want to prophesy resurrection in the name of jesus like lazarus like the son of the widow at name like the 12 year old lady in the bible i decree and declare everything called dead in your life as a result of this mystery this night not tomorrow i command them to come back to life now i command them to come back to life now dead opportunities dead relationships dead graces in the name of jesus thank you jesus we believe you are coming here tonight is proof we trust you we believe you in your power to change us your wisdom to transform us your anointing to empower us this is koinonia and lord we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you for the privilege of positioning ourselves through alignment for encounters that you will transform us tonight this is our prayer we ask oh god that our minds be enlightened let your light come bless lift change and take us to dimensions we never dreamt possible we believe this and that's why we are here spirit of the living god we give you unrestrained access to our minds transform us in the name of jesus christ amen god bless you please be seated thank you so much for the many people please if, if they if they are comfortable standing let them stand um, it's going to be a whole lot of let's see how it goes if they get too tired i'm sure outside will be cold and wet but if we can get a few of them there then uh, that would be fine but um, i know it's cold it's the season and um, better days are coming the day will come when it is raining you will not even know oh, yes. enjoy the process never pity yourself on your way to greatness enjoy every process be featured on the way so that you will have a story to tell let it not be that it was when everybody arrived that you came so that you will have a story too say so one day whilst listening to the word of god i was standing outside cold and you look at your children and say it was that diligence that brought about the blessings we have today hallelujah i have learned never to be embarrassed for as long as i know i am on the path to greatness follow it in the rain the sun in convenience and in inconvenience follow it diligently and be proud of your pursuit and sacrifices nobody wins the olympic by mistake life is intentional progress is intentional it will cost you it has never been a secret the cost dimension of life is not a secret it's a price that is obvious everyone knows that to be great there will be sacrifices there will be seasons of constraint only a fool expects results without process lord we thank you for what you are doing we're proud of where you are leading us and lord we ask for grace to learn to appreciate and to access the keys that will help us rise in the name of jesus i've been thinking about tonight's meeting um i think about all the meetings but tonight's meeting struck me because um, every once in a while the holy spirit just gives me an opportunity to reminisce on all the teachings that have come um, 
and I submit to us in this house that God has granted us access to many many teachings this year alone we have been exposed to several teachings and you see the goal of these teachings these teachings are informations they are revelations that we are supposed to receive we are supposed to believe we are supposed to engage them and then watch them produce results in our lives and lift us from one dimension to the other hallelujah the goal of revelation is the transformation that it brings so that your life becomes an epistle you become a testimony that god did not lie in that area and truly it takes a while for the truth to settle in us and produce the desired result but we must endure hearing once learning once knowing once does not get the job done we must immerse ourselves it's from the word baptizo baptism we must immerse ourselves in this truth until we are literally possessed by them and then they will produce undeniable results in our lives proverbs chapter 4 there's a song in my spirit let praises rise from the inside you know the song from the inside help me may you delight very powerful song in the inside in the inside help me help me set me on fire from the inside from the inside instruction of a father and attend to no understanding we're reading down to verse 9 for I give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law verse 3 for I was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother for he taught me also and said unto me let thine heart retain my words keep my commands and leave five get wisdom get understanding although it is so volatile but forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth forsake her not and she shall preserve thee love her and she shall keep thee wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all your getting get understanding exalt her esteem her place value on her and she shall promote thee she shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her verse 9 she shall give unto thy head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver unto thee praise the Lord I am amazed 
at what the wisdom of God can do in the life of an individual, an organization, a church, a ministry. I am awed. While I was coming, I was talking to one of the protocol persons who was with me. And I was just nodding my head and I told him, I said, the wisdom of God, we desperately, desperately need the wisdom of God. You see, the Bible says, there is a way, please listen carefully, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. There is a way that culture proposes and says men walk in it. There is a way that intellectualism, Sophia, human wisdom, experience. Are we together now? Encapsulated in education, science, whatever it is, the logic of life. There is a way that it leads you. There is a way that society leads you to approach life. There is a way your instinct that is a derivative of the unrenewed mind leads you but the bible says listen carefully it says the end thereof are the ways of death our society is full of people guessing their ways our society is full of people hoping they are right our society is full of people imagining that they will make it young people fathers mothers leaders largely walking in confusion hoping that we understand what we are doing Do you know sometimes when i stand and i look at people i just feel like crying because i'm tempted to ask the question truly speaking who did this to us at what point did the confusion start are we together i have been passionate and you would have noticed that i i discovered that we have done well in this house with respect to exposing us to encounters by god's grace teachings have come teachings after teachings helping us to understand the person the ministry of the holy spirit we have seen encounters we have seen the power of god we have seen the glory of god but at the start of this year when the lord told me it was our year of triumph i took out time to take a little inventory and I found out that um, although God had helped us, we were lacking grossly in the understanding of the systems of the kingdom. We were doing well in terms of encounters, the love for God, passion, prioritizing God. But I knew that we needed to step up our understanding. Otherwise, frustration will be inevitable. It is painful to love God and still fail. Did you hear what I said? it is it is justifiable to to hate to fail when you hate god and fail you say after all i'm not serious but when you love god a dear lady asked me a question day before yesterday i think and she said apostle are there good men i'm not teaching on, on men are there good men again and i said are you kidding of course they are and she said my mother was a good woman why is her life this way and it struck me again see let me tell you this you never never guess your way to greatness you never get your way to guess your way to peace the older you become it does not equate to the wiser you become there are 70 80 90 year old people remember we are conditioned environmentally that means that somebody mentored somebody who mentored somebody who mentored somebody who went to a school and submitted himself to a teacher's view who mentored somebody who later married somebody who mentored some children we our society is a chain of mentorship largely a communication of informations that are unscriptural and inaccurate are we together this is a very uncomfortable truth but we have to admit it because our lives and our results show that we obviously are missing it somewhere let me challenge us a bit look at your finances you will agree with me that something is missing somewhere look at your family life married or not 
if you're married look at your family why the fight why the quarrel it gets worse if both of you are christians look at the children why are they unruly why are they indisciplined how about your job look at the retrogression in our lives are we together now and do you know what most people will say this is what we say i don't know what i don't know why things are not working i've taught you here and i will drum it until it enters your spirit nothing works by itself nothing works by itself marriage does not work by itself spiritual life does not work by itself becoming blessed and wealthy does not work by itself becoming employed becoming responsible does not work by itself becoming a virtuous lady becoming a responsible man does not work by itself brothers and sisters growing spiritually does not work by itself becoming transformed does not work by itself everything in life must be engaged with wisdom to produce are we together now our confusion in life is because our intentions are not our results what we desire is not what we see so we desire a particular outcome but certain other outcomes keep happening and they keep repeating themselves regardless of the strategies we are trying ask any family represented here they will tell you we are tired of suffering we are tired of argument we are tired of pain can't we live in peace then they hold a meeting and say let's live in peace they all agree two days later everybody has gone haywire do you know why because the issue is not counseling the issue is the bankruptcy of certain informations our unwillingness to admit that time does not give knowledge please can you just flow just play something to flow hallelujah time does not impart knowledge time never never decides anything time only reveals I can go on my knees tonight and beg every one of you listening to me here listening online we are not acting on stage this thing is not a drama we are trying to act called ministry we are talking about transforming people there there is an exact formula you have to understand this there is a programming society has programmed our minds Africa has been programmed in a certain way demons have worked with informations for years and decades they have come from culture to culture from university to university from college to college from school to school they have indoctrinated men into thinking and understanding life in a particular way that is producing unfavorable outcomes listen pain will never produce change it only reveals the need for change That you are going through an unfavorable situation does not mean it will change that you are crying and say oh god will you not wipe my tears it may provoke the mercy of god but every time god wants to show you mercy he does two things he sends his word and he sends men the solution to our problems our challenges the doors we trust and hope to open are shrouded in men and information you reject men you reject truth you will die it says love me proverbs chapter 4 paraphrasing right that i will preserve you i will glorify you i will put an ornament of glory upon you please listen to me the hardest person the hardest person to ever help is the man and the woman who is resistant to change the moment an individual holds on to an old idea and old information whether theologically established philosophically established educationally established it doesn't matter what the basis is for as long as you are unwilling to open up your mind for the vetting and the probing of the spirit if per adventure the information you have carried all through your life is wrong there is nothing embarrassing about discovering that you have believed a lie you can't change there is always time for a meek and a humble person 
who will say look i believe there has to be why am i a bad father begging and begging and 50 years we are still staying in a rented apartment i love god something is wrong why is there no favor in my life everything i lay my hands to do doesn't work listen listen this is not the issue of man of god pray for me this is the issue of submitting yourself to say i know that i am missing something because your life is producing a result it's just that it's a result you don't want if your life were not producing pain is a result failure is a result it means you are activating certain principles unknowingly limitations are results am i blessing you tonight let's not act as if god is so wicked and cannot help us and cannot change us and cannot lift us hear me your life and my life is at the mercy of our understanding of the systems of the kingdom provided we submit ourselves to understand it i give you a guarantee your light will come but for as long as we sit down and allow demons to build fortification along our wrong thinking our wrong mindset we argue and insult and move in pride especially for we the men because you see men our that sense of authority and dominion sometimes the false version of it has eaten us up the fact that we have access certain information for years does not mean it is valid a whole nation can be wrong that an information is old does not make it right it's been there but it's not right are we together our society is full of needless pain and sorrow sorrow upon sorrow there are families today that cannot live in peace they love god tongue talking some of them are even working in the vineyard of god but the systems of God that have been allocated to make for peace is not there. Divorce rates are soaring. Young people marrying the lifetime of marriages, two years. Lovely people, educated, they love God. Once upon a time, they could not sleep until they talk with themselves. Two years later, they hate themselves. What do you not know? Why do people fail? A family of 10 people nobody ever rises beyond certain barriers we we say demons yes it is the obvious reason but not the only reason something authorized them a door was open to them most of us the demons have been casted yet our lives have not changed because there is an equation that will have to commit us commit our understanding and our participation anybody who is unwilling to listen to this has failed not will fail has failed hallelujah when i understood the systems of god my life changed do you know someone sent me a text today lamenting and languishing on a lot of things in his life you know certain monies he was hoping he can get and he said if i can just get this 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 i will have peace i said no sir no sir you can have peace now peace is a revelation peace is a revelation it is not the product of the arrival or departure of certain factors peace is a revelation you can choose to be frustrated and wrinkle yourself to death our society is full of angry people whose lack of understanding has added to their age young people looking old why because a revelation has programmed them even their bodies they have wrinkled themselves 10 years ahead of their age moving in anger and frustration I came here tonight to challenge us God is not a magician God is not just a miracle worker God is a God of principles a miracle is a sign that something went wrong and so God intervenes supernaturally to correct it a principle is a sign that things are working as designed are we together now yes every one of us seated here came from a family listen carefully came from a culture and all of our cultures have 
certain tenets, certain understandings foundationally we were indoctrinated with those things as a template for living we have perspectives financially speaking we have perspectives maritally speaking we have perspectives even in our pursuit of godliness we have perspectives in the area of parenting we have perspectives in the area of education and orientation we have perspectives in just our sociological living relationships and most of these perspectives most of it was fabricated by men and women who did not it was not a derivative of the ministry of the holy spirit it came as a result of people carving out a a system of relationship based on their pain their hatred their frustration and let me tell you something that you are born again does not transform you automatically it is only the access point for transformation to start being born again means that you are now authorized to legally begin to engage yourself in transformation there is something that we have allowed we have introduced it like a drug in our spirits in our minds that is cancerous is producing outcomes we do not desire so you see a lot of people and they tell you this is what i want but then their lives never produce it because another system is interrupting your desire and compelling a result that is not consistent with your desire see that so every time you come for koinonia know this that your coming for koinonia is a bailout system god is rescuing you some of you god is single-handedly picking you out of a family of 11 people to say look if you people keep praying and doing night vigils you will do it forever the, the spiritual dimension is ready to be corrected but there is a level of partnership with the holy spirit through knowledge through understanding there is something you must engage nobody nobody is born successful even if you are born into a rich family it is not your success the bible says in joshua chapter 1 verse 8 he said this book of the law shall not depart this compendium of mysteries this this the, the wisest perspective in all matters let it not depart he said but thou shalt meditate therein day and night consistently right he said that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein it leaves you with a promise not a suggestion he says then shall you make your way prosperous and you shall have good there is bad and wicked and foolish success there is good success look at me there is no such thing that god chose one person sam come and said you you will succeed and then chose another person and say you you will fail no way god is very just he created the systems and said anybody that wants to succeed subscribe to it in other words my being successful is not something god just chose to do last week he allocated the pathway the same way when you follow a road the government they, they build the road whoever wants to get to that destination follow it whether a child whether an adult the road does not ask you how old you are provided you are following legally it says go you don't go to buy a car and they ask you how old you are no no once you can pay for it it is given to you is that true why are we failing why are things not working in our lives why are we sitting down hoping that one day god will change whereas he has decided you see if the will of god is not known to us if the will of god is not known to us we will keep praying foolish prayers and we'll keep asking as if it is god's pleasure to watch us go through pain and frustration something we do not know is responsible for these pains and these tragedies please give us jeremiah 29 and verse 11 jeremiah 29 and verse 11 for i know the thoughts that i think towards you this is god speaking thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you other versions say a future and an expected end a defined end not not an end that let's just be going and we hope no 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 
unexpected end that means there's something god has for me joshua selman in the blueprint of prophecy he designed that i will become something whether or not i become it is not up to him he has designed it it is my cooperation with him that will determine whether i will leave the reality of prophecy there are people god designed to be millionaires as it is they have never touched one million but in the heart in the loins of prophecy is their heritage is their destiny one of the most deceptive statements in the church is if god wants me he has the power to make it it is it is using the truth to kill you are using the truth like a knife and turning it to pierce people to say if god wants it he will make it no there are many things god wants to do that is not yet done on earth it is his will that all men be saved there are men still going to hell the fact that somebody went to hell is a sign that if you don't change nothing will change because if god has people to attend to he will attend to those going to hell first before the issue of rent are we together sorry i'm sure they are working on the sound if it does go off then we are going to pray is that fine promise already gave us uh, so I, I think i've said enough for us to pray for any reason the sound goes off just fire and pray very seriously and say lord what i've had so far you see how my life is going you lay your hands and you pray don't laugh you pray and say father i know i bear witness with the fact that i am confused as i'm standing now i don't know my left from my right i'm just growing older you need to give me direction and decorum hallelujah do you know marriages now are some of the most fearful things once you see two people about to get married the first thing i look is not whether they love themselves the first thing i look is whether they understand the systems of the kingdom you just carry a lady you carry a lady that you want to marry and two of you stand and we say now what is the name of what you are doing you say we love ourselves and uh, we're trusting the lord to live together that's wonderful it's a good starting point but do you understand the mysteries that have been allocated for living for the next 60 years knowing that you will get old she will get old not knowing physically speaking the things that the future holds do you understand the mysteries what if after your wedding night somebody appears and say you took my wife do you know what to do or will you cry this is what we are talking about if you get married to this wonderful lady now for instance and in the night while you are sleeping you are happy wedding night you danced all through the day and on your wedding night a stranger appears and say well in case you don't know they don't marry anyhow from this family and since you came foolishly i am here do you understand that this one is not love again this is spiritual intelligence because many of us will get up and say ah, honey i had a very bad dream let me it's not just a bad dream your life is about to be wrecked into pieces because we live in an environment that we walk through spiritual intelligence now love took you there understanding keeps you understanding keeps you brothers and sisters don't say i got born again you have watched seven people from your family the highest time they stayed in their marriages were two years what makes you think you will stay more so it is true love your wife but much more than that access the keys access the keys are we together what if your wife gets pregnant and you hear a report and they say the body the baby is turning anyhow and is about to kill your wife what mystery do you know that's no longer love what do you know are you hearing what i'm saying when you start building your house and someone comes the next day you come and see the blood of a goat on they demarcate it on the side of your fence you don't know the person who put it but you put it there and then they leave a letter if you add one more block you will die responsible gentleman you went to school but what are you going to do about that situation listen carefully to what i'm telling you those who are those of our parents fathers and mothers here know they they understand what i'm saying 
it's the young people that are just laughing and joking when you rise and become responsible for your life you know that this world is a fierce place it's not a place of joke at all you see a letter written there nobody has built in this house in this family what gives you the audacity to say you want to start building a house at 27 they put that blood there as a sign be warned can you answer whoever wrote it without seeing him because the person put it and ran away can you carry the block by yourself and drop it and say because of what you said mason we are walking day and night ah it's risky to not know how to respond did you hear what i said it's not just dangerous it's risky hear what i'm saying it's risky you go for a wedding and you are dancing and somebody comes to just touch you and hug you and rub all kinds of things on you and go away is there a system of immunity that answers immediately i'm not talking of prayer your life has been equipped already by default that woman touches something and as she's going back headache starts first then the leg stops working and then whatever shrine tells her you made a mistake big mistake you touch somebody who is not just a dancer on a wedding ground there is a warrior quietly seated what do you know that is because of tribalism they look at you and say we are relieving you from your job your wife is not working you are the only one working on account of your faith and integrity because you refuse to bribe are we together they now bring you a sack letter do you know what else to engage so you don't go hungry or will that experience begin the the start of your frustration what do you know and what do you not know this is what i want you to know on earth the days the days i, I was speaking with jimmy's father-in-law this morning and he was telling me he said kai that during our time it uh, their time now it was a bit easier and he said during our time now the world is spiritual everything i mean you have to be spiritual about everything literally literally many young people are not spiritual i know you are not spiritual because you do not know what to do brothers and sisters when you return home and you see your father beating your mother boxing her you are a stupid woman you are a witch you are a devil as one who has worked with god do you know what to do or will you stand and say let me separate them sorry and you go back to your room and say god when will you wipe our tears do you know what to engage this this is my assignment this year to to equip you to know what to do that issue of man of god pray for me wonderful but what if the man of god is sleeping because it is only the keeper of israel that doesn't sleep joshua selman sleeps and he can slumber we keep carrying heart pain and say i called you by 2 30 sir you were sleeping of course well, what is the meaning of that of course are we together there is something we do not know we allow evil to step into our families and just destroy people like chickens and we sit down and say god i think you have to do something wonderful submit your prayer request at miracle service but much more than that will you be able to rise in intelligence look at the suffering that ravages families financially and do you know the pain it happened is happening to people who love and fear god this is what makes it painful if i don't love god and i don't fear god whatever i get i have to admit it but when i love god and fear god i serve him truly i serve him faithfully and then all of a sudden nothing works lord i'm looking for transport to come to church I can't come for koinonia because there is no transport lord i'm looking for my school fees it's only twenty thousand. 
it can happen lord my father is about to die i i, we, I just need five thousand for his drugs is it really the will of god to leave you in that pain who taught you is the will of god are we together we have allowed the devil to destroy our lives can i present scenarios right now and ask you what your response will be can i give all of you koinonia right now and say from all you have learned from january till now write the following exam and then i create an imaginary scene my dear we we want to buy a fan for the worship team and we leave the spiritual responsibility to you engage every key you know our own is bring us a fan based on the mysteries do you know what to do what are you going to do what is step one what is step two for many of us step one is to cry step two is to argue step three is to look onto man and and step four is to be frustrated but there are others who know what to do are we together yes some of us right now unfortunately our loved ones have gone to be with the lord like the gentleman who said his father has died the, the gentleman sharing the testimony father died mother died he had to stand in as a young man for his sister but what spiritual intelligence he blessed her because he understood that things don't just happen you don't just have twins just because you you are you think you're a matured man and you have a wife that the realm of the spirit controls this realm he did that like a joke came to the house of god for reinforcement the result was as desired when your result is as desired it meant the principle was correct when you have it the way you want it it means that the principle was correct light my life like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle what do you do if you get up in the morning and just feel a sharp pain are you intelligent enough to know what to engage please koinonia listen to me i want you have to learn this thing my assignment this year is to cause you to be spiritual to understand the systems of the kingdom so you know what to do the salvation of many is dependent on your wisdom the correct application you see the bible presents the wisest perspective in all matters the wisest perspective in all matters i don't trust myself outside of the word of god the bible is not an opinion to choose what to believe and choose what to refuse it's a compendium of the wisdom of god and it says get wisdom understand how to apply the keys of the kingdom correctly and you will rise up like an edifice if i get up in the morning right now and my chest starts paining me and i start coughing blood do i know what to do or is it the day i'm in the hospital quarter to die that i start saying which message do i listen to the bible says be instant in season these keys will test you do you understand the keys listen listen the bible tells us there are arrows that fly by day i'm not scaring you is the truth are we together now what gives you guarantee that on your way to travel to kaduna or abuja tomorrow the devil is not planning to kill you what if right now god should open your eyes and you see that in the realm of the spirit they have given you 24 hours to die do you know what to engage it's risky to live not knowing what to do it's riskier 
to make bold face and bold statements when you have not gotten that key because you will brag and talk and talk and be whipped and punished only God knows how many covens only God knows where and where they have taken my name let this guy die let him not reach August only God knows the demons that have been casted out you think they don't take back reports they ask them from whence comest thou I came from Koinonia what happened this mad young man this crazy idiot called Joshua Selman casted us let's plan can we kill him in two weeks yes two more weeks yes they added two more weeks I'm still standing oh he's about to take a flight can we do something because they will plan no they will plan i i wish what i was i was telling you was a lie on tuesday we are going to eat down for pastor alpha's program what is the guarantee that you will not die in the, on acts in the accident as you are going what is the guarantee that as we are not drive the car will capsize and kill me i'm coming back for sure If I die, you can say I made noise and I died. But for as long as I'm alive, no. I found it here. The wisdom of God. Jesus said, I have the power to lay it down. And the power to pick it up. Did you hear that? Men are given the power to lay it down. And the power to pick it up. Now, don't feel bad if your loved one has gone to be with the Lord. Don't worry, you are alive now. The responsibility is on you. You can't receive this for your family. You can only intercede for them. When it comes to the matters of the kingdom, it's first a personal affair. It must become truth and life to you. They are life to those who find them. Koinonia, they are life to those who find them. We live in a fierce and a wicked society. If someone one of our ladies was giving me a testimony and she said how that someone came to boggle I think to boggle their room also and carry a laptop now that whoever that thief is has stolen and has gone sad but do you understand a system in the kingdom because you need the laptop and for some of us maybe that laptop just came it was if somebody gave it to you now you are in a straight betwixt you need that laptop what key do i now engage you can't cry forever now that it has gone what do i do are you hearing what i'm saying i wish we had time tonight we're going to pray seriously i would have called a few people at random and would have just created imaginary life scenarios and i would have asked what you have learned so that we don't keep compounding mysteries upon mysteries upon mysteries there are so many other mysteries lined up that you will be learning between now and the end of the year but the key is are you getting it is it spirit and life to you hallelujah are we together one of the mysteries that i'm trusting that the lord god of heaven will help us to conquer is this thing up of poverty and lack hello believers hear me poverty and what say it poverty and poverty and lack is a mystery i told you poverty is a strategy by satan it's a strategy poverty is not just a state of mind it's a spiritual strategy one of the most effective arsenal of satan for making the lives of people useless we come from different backgrounds with different experiences but we can begin to make our choices and trust God to help us I'm not teaching on on poverty or prosperity tonight but um, my, my assignment tonight is to review and introduce us to the keys my heart I, I it kept burning in me since through the week and I said Lord my prayer is that your people your people will get this thing that they will understand it and it will rise hallelujah what do you not know sister 
what are you still allowing inside your head that is authorizing the devil to make life miserable for you brother what is it that god has been trying to pound out of your life that you are refusing to let go me this is how it is so my my i must i'm this like that that's how we are in our culture where we come from is it working is it working be honest is it working listen one of the keys of great people is their disloyalty to any information that does not produce there's no such thing as i was born with this if it does not work dump it throw it far from you and embrace that which is capable of blessing you the scribes and the pharisees already knew the truth but because of the ethics of tradition are we together now nicodemus came to jesus by night in john chapter 3 and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god so they knew they were not in confusion but in the daytime they refused why because of the rudiments of tradition the bible says that has made the word of god of non-effect as though it were not powerful could it be that there is something this gentleman can know he's about writing his last exam if not because of the strike i'm sure maybe this week or next week he would have written his exam now and been a confirmed doctor now six seven years ago he, he probably would have been a naive gentleman just with a desire but he passed through a system month after month principle after principle and now after six years he's one exam to go to become a confirmed doctor and every other person called a medical doctor in the world just becomes a senior or junior colleague instantly what is the difference now whereas somebody would be convulsing eight years ago and this guy will stand confused eight years later someone will be convulsing and say it's all right it's something we can handle because something something and information your fear is a sign that you have not learned something thank you you will never be truly free from fear until knowledge bails you out fear is destroying us fear of the future fear of everything fear of death fear of living young people are afraid will i ever be established with a salary of 50,000 as a graduate when will I ever be able to build a house it will not build you a house what will build you a house is the understanding of the word of God they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their arms save them but thou O Lord because thou shown a favor towards them you must understand the keys that are responsible for activating the things that we need in life hallelujah mother there is something you can know that can transform your children could it be that the rebellion from the children is a product of an approach that may be cultural but not scriptural cultural but not scriptural there are men who are taught beat the living daylight out of your wife it's a way of showing her that you are a man she does anything beat her once she will behave you have tried it infinite times it has not changed that woman may be a sincere woman under the influence of a spirit all that she may need is one encounter with the power of god and she's free and she will be one of the nicest women in the whole world now you can manage you can beat yourself There's, there was a gentleman that joined the queue after service and there were like three four five lines to him and i looked at him and i was surprised how could a spirit still be in this guy even after a very heavy service i was looking and i was seeing a spirit the guy was playing but in the realm of the spirit i was seeing so i kept quiet when the guy just came and stood close to me i said what's wrong and the guy said i'm i'm a thief i can steal anything i said ah that's it you see that that take that thief to the prison you you hang him there behind the bars and say promise and write an agreement that you will never touch anybody's biro again while he's doing that the spirit steps out and then the same human being will sign the agreement and the spirit will enter 
two weeks after going out something starts pushing him it's not him everybody will beat him at home and say what do i do with this child because the mystery one minute prayer how many minutes one minute prayer under the heavy anointing will build that guy's 10 years of misery but because see let me tell you ignorance makes pain continue it prolongs pain ignorance prolongs pain ignorance prolongs pain ignorance prolongs pain are we together and i just it was just a simple tap i gave him on the head and that was the end of it that wild wicked spirit because the gentleman confessed that he was willing to be free how about people that come here you see someone standing almost staggering and you say you came you you smoked something before you came to church he won't argue that's a sign that he wants to change but there is something he does not know see the house of god is truly a blessing it's a place where the mysteries that are responsible for your desire are given to you that's why it matters are you seeing the reason why god loves crowd the crowds are made of people the people are made of their needs they need access to the truth to be free that's how we change society i can tell you something and i say it with all my heart and with all joy by the grace of god the marriages that will happen in this ministry will be heaven on earth listen it's not just prophecy alone the keys have been given some of our loved ones here who are married you see the peace and tranquility regardless of what there are some kinds of evil that cannot happen it's gone do you know why knowledge there are people here who have married different tribes the same tribe but same knowledge the same knowledge has brought them into the same kingdom culture i've said it again and again that we will all be great you believe that prophecy and that the best part is that we will all know ourselves you will see it it will start one step don't forget about what you have not gotten today line upon line you are walking you are taking that step and it's in the name of the lord and god is helping you you may not look like it but the hand of God is upon you. There is a mystery that is navigating you towards the right path. Hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a work that should be approached with the wisdom of God. The word of God represents the wisdom of God. What is the wisdom of God? The scriptural solution to every problem on earth. The scriptural approach his modus operandi his method is called his wisdom god's approach to life is his wisdom god's approach to life is his wisdom and the bible is full of it jesus himself the epitome of wisdom when he came upon the earth we saw the way he approached life the spirit of the christ empowered several people from genesis to revelation and they manifested dimensions of living that were supernatural enviable admirable and the lord has said this is our year of triumph we are not going to triumph just through desire it will be on the strength of what we know hallelujah there is something we must know there is something i need to know to be higher than where i am my limitation in life right now is the limitation of how far i've been able to access the wisdom of god there's more i've only scratched the surface if i submit myself and i learn more i rise more because i begin to see how predictable my life can be on the strength of wisdom my journey so far is a journey of searching the wisdom of god like a man in a gold mine searching for it when you find it you rejoice because you can stand on the strength there was something i found out about the anointing there was something i found out about miracles signs and wonders it didn't just happen there was a day i found it there was a day i found something about favor it wasn't always like that it's not just time 
that brought favor no time just continued passing and by the mercy and the grace of god something was accessed listen there is something you can access today that can make your seven days be equivalent to the blessings of five years it's not a prayer it's the truth there is something you can find that can compress the sufferings and the hardship of men my assignment to you this year is to help you understand this and to through emphasis reiterate it again and again until it becomes your conviction if it is not your conviction you will never walk in it let me tell you the truth these things i teach were not things i started teaching this year i've started teaching it before so don't think it's because god has helped today that i say it's easy to no 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 the wisdom of god what is god's call to you tonight stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing if you are not getting it settled down something is wrong did you hear what i said stop guessing prophesy to somebody stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing no stop guessing everybody doesn't like me what do i do stop guessing there is an exact principle that is responsible for delightsomeness stop guessing why is it that everything i touch doesn't work stop guessing please say it again say it to somebody stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing inside outside online stop guessing it's risky to guess the moment anything is not working in my life i settle down i need to look at this something must be wrong there is something i'm not understanding it makes your journey easier than just guessing trial and error you don't have that much of time for trial and error man of god the power of god is not flowing in your life stop guessing did you hear what i said stop guessing you are not getting something you pray for somebody and say it is done he goes to another man of god just looking at him and the demon goes out stop guessing you just told the guy it is done it is not done the, the guy still has the spirit is still there are we together the person came to you for prayer you now came and said oh um, i've been suffering bad luck my whole life everything is going wrong and he said really father we thank you we ask that um, this gentleman be free he says amen now the fact that he said amen does not mean heaven said amen the pastor prayed don't say they prayed for me who prayed for you what did the person who prayed for you know what did he know while he was praying for you i can pray for this person but the efficacy of my prayer is tied to the limitation of the knowledge i know don't just say they prayed for you who prayed for you and what was what what is the the reservoir of the spiritual knowledge that was resident in the person who prayed for you it's not just that they prayed for you so you tell this guy go in the name of jesus it is done this gentleman goes and nothing happens stop guessing the person comes somewhere else other than your own place are we together and stands and someone looks at him and says hold my hand i bless you that's it this gentleman walks out before he gets home an alert has come a call has come is that guessing no sir a gentleman prays for twins over his sister comes for koinonia drops the result when he was praying the twins did not know they were praying for them but they still came out as twins is that guess remember he was not the husband of the wife he was a brother ah. if you can pray for twins and they come out twins think of what else you can determine write on paper and say after two years rent over you wrote it on paper two years later you are standing in your own house where you can set the rules and not have anyone harass you do you believe this that means there's something you can write about your job and say in the name of jesus by october 
I am employed, gainfully employed. And then you write a salary structure, Lord, I'm trusting you, 150 to 200,000. While you are writing it, those who don't know God say you are a stupid person. Don't mind them. Don't be angry. They are only revealing to you what they have not been taught. So don't argue. You argue you have brought yourself down. You write it. By October, you are on a job, 150,000. For what he said, he's able to do. Are we together? Yes. You can make up your mind and say in the name of Jesus, I love God, but I'm not going to marry a fool. I won't marry a stupid man. I'm going to marry somebody that loves God, loves me and is serious. While you are saying it, your friends will say, you, you better just say yes to any man that comes. So the way we do this thing now, go online, find any photo you want, click like on Facebook, pursue that person till he says yes and marry quietly. That is their own way. And they will give you one or two testimonies of those who it worked for. Did they tell you they are in peace now? You say it and you confess. And you don't just confess as a lady and stop there. You now say, okay, I understand that life is about partnership. Lord, what is my contribution? You can't sit down not doing anything and want God to carry his son that he has refined and worked upon walk diligently upon him brought out the best in him and, and just give you god is not unjust are we together lord what do i need to do and god starts working on you materialism throw it out be mouthy and talking anyhow throw it out you must be of a meek and a quiet spirit you want to marry a great man this your talk talk you will tear down his business god has helped this guy before your arrival you won't come as a destroyer are you ready and so you are he's walking He's taking it out of you in two months you have you are transformed you have become such a virtuous lady you who will be running your mouth talking all kinds of things you will say if if the guy does not have this if there's no jeep i will marry god has worked on you and that way he can now bring you to the person he has destined for you and you will now be a blessing the same way as a guy any lady you see ah this lady is pretty you are not doing anything you are not serious you don't know god you don't know the loss of life there's no structural establishment god is not helping you yet you are just standing and making noise the systems of god oh i want to be a great pastor and you start a church one year two years three years you are still on four members then you start criticizing and say it's not everybody that has crowd oh, keep quiet you are not getting something find out lord what what am i missing and god says one no wisdom two the level of grace there's no result three people are not being changed everybody you prayed for there's no testimony why should people come members are not idiots they will run to where god will visit them criticize them they will not stop members are not stupid in this nigeria of today oh no no people are wise you can keep running your mouth against people while people look for where their solutions are in the rain they will stand in the sun they will stand because what they are going through is, is worse than the sun so they will stand anywhere to make sure they receive please i want you to make up your mind today that anything that is not working in your life just know remember what i said stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing just calm down invite the holy spirit spirit of the living god i am not getting something i am not getting something a meek heart i am not getting something you gave me a beautiful wife now i hate her no affection for my wife again you bless me i'm about to throw my wife out of the house i don't give money nothing what is wrong spirit of the living god help me help me and then light comes dwell with them according to knowledge ah that means there's something i do not understand i think my wife is another man now the bible is bailing me out are we together yes so the next time you meet your wife and she asks you she say how was the how was the um, how was your job today and you say fine say no give me details you won't get angry you will know that that's how women are dwell with them according so you will start we went by 7 a.m uh -huh. by eight o'clock they gave us tea uh -huh. they, you are paying that price because you now understand the systems while you are paying that price 
what are you going to get a reward you will get a hug you will get a nice meal and you will get you a darling you see that you made adjustment or you can stand and brag and say me i'm a one word man and punish yourself and your life will not go forward how about employees that never get promoted and think it's just demons if you like pour one gallon of anointing oil in your head you are not productive when they want to downsize people they give you you came to work two months they gave you warning you are not productive sir customer relations zero friendliness at work zero on the job zero experience zero humility to learn zero initiative zero even if i'm the one who employed you you are going yes you are going that you are a member of coin you are not productive so instead of just sitting down to get angry and say my boss is a wicked man do you know how much that guy collects 1.2 and he's giving me fifty thousand. no lord i love my boss i pray for him in the name of jesus i declare he is a leader there is something he knows that is setting him above he may not be a very nice man but in the name of jesus i pray for him and i love him and you walk up to him and say sir i just want to say thank you i've been working here eight months and i appreciate your mentorship and your leadership i just brought this wine to say thank you he said what, what what is it for i mean I'm, I'm paying you no 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 sir i want to thank you much more than the salary you are changing my life if there is anything that can make me improve i am ready to learn always know that you are finding a very worthy mentee in me thank you sir and you go out you have programmed something he will act as if he did enter him keep watching the day promotion is coming and then somebody now comes to say do you know this person is yoruba he says hey, shut up it's my company it's my job you gave him memories you showed him that you were ready to learn the moment you step out he writes your name thank god this is the person i've been looking for and then he calls you one day and gives you a very difficult task and you start saying kai my boss has been on my case for two months he's testing you he's seeing that you are the next person who should be the director of that department he you have you are earning his trust but your lack of understanding is making you interpret it as wickedness you brought your boss's name for uh, uh, this thing uh, uh, miracle service you dropped it on and not just you didn't just write his name you say oh god punish this guy frustrate the tokens of this and that whereas listen if you had understanding and wisdom you would know that that's your lifting why does he ask me to stay back when others are going and then he gives me a hard job and then he shouts at me and i apologize and he does not say sorry he's not a fool there's something he knew that made him the boss keep watching while he's acting he's taking note one day he calls you and says look um i know that it's not my character to do this but i want you to know that i am absolutely impressed i have watched you for six months all the other people are arguing around those who are insulting him and then he lifts you overnight and then you continue praying for him again will he be perfect no he would do foolish things he would do stupid things but he's still your boss one day he calls you and says look you are so smart why are you still working in this corporation i think you are smart enough to have your own company and he says look call abc and tell them i said they should help you and in three years you have become a ceo of yourself you have become colleagues brothers and sisters lack of wisdom is destroying us are we not seeing this thing our interpretation about people and life is a product of a, a bankruptcy of life we call light darkness we call darkness light are we together we call a process failure we call failure defeat we don't know how to allocate names based on wisdom we call everything everything but god is teaching us tonight that the kingdom of god has systems i came with a fire burning in my spirit tonight that if you can learn the systems of god you will laugh when others are frowning and they will ask you why are you frowning and then you say there's a light that i see that's why i'm laughing you know in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light 
that I see only comes alive every time I hear your voice. It comes, it comes alive every time I hear your voice. There's a joy in my heart. In spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and this joy in my soul only comes alive every time I hear your voice. It comes, it comes alive every time I hear your voice. And there's a peace. In my heart In spite of all the sadness That surrounds me And these beats That I have Only comes alive Every time I hear your voice It comes, it comes alive Every time I hear your voice it comes, it comes alive Every time I hear your voice You know why? Because you know You don't rejoice when things happen You rejoice to make them happen It says rejoice in the Lord always So you don't rejoice just because you feel like No, the Holy Ghost moves you You have rent, you are writing Trouble, you are writing no child you are writing no job you are writing no wife you are writing and at the end of it you are dancing and people say ah, i've been hearing a song he said no 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 it's not it. i am dancing because this is what happens knowledge are you hearing what i'm saying now and people look at you and say ah promise won't you is it not you that I saw the landlord embarrassing you? You claim you are going to church and you can't pay simple 40,000. The moment you hear, don't worry. The normal thing is agitation, but use intelligence in the spirit. You get back and say, Lord, I may not have 40,000 now, but I have you. I have peace. I have joy. I may go through embarrassment now, but I know that the God I serve, the God I serve, the God I serve can arise for me. They may mock you and say all kinds of things. Know that a mock is a sign that satan is already agitated by your success there is something he's seeing mockery is a mystery in the spirit it's a sign that your result is appearing already let me tell you hear this hear this if anybody mocks you they gave you a sign that something is already arriving i promise you know this i'm teaching you deep mysteries mockery is a mystery madam are you a man or a woman this is 10 years and you are not married Ooh, start rejoicing don't cry it's a sign that a parcel has left heaven something is coming satan can see and so he says look frustrate them men walk by their senses do something frustrate them but those who are spiritual know they get inside the room and start dancing lord you are so good Hey, you are worthy of all my praise. Lord, you are so good. You are exalted as a love most high. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. Lord, you are so good. You are exalted as a love most high. Listen. And then everything starts agitating you you go to the place of work they are insulting you you come back for the results they are insulting you don't don't cry if you cry you are not wise you begin to rejoice and you go to Satan Satan what did you see that is making you restless what have you seen what did you see about my baby that is making because you see the attacks were not like that the attacks are a reaction satan has lived long in this planet he knows we walk by sight but for those who have been able to grow spiritually you don't find their tears you say satan 
if I will ever cry is to God oh, it's not to you Job was in a state in his life when nothing was working Job was on the ground sat down on the ground and his wife told him he said cause God and die Job said why are you talking like one of these stupid women ha God though he slay me though he slay me are we together now Job's friends came from everywhere and everybody was talking every kind of nonsense let me tell you one of the worst things that can happen to you is to sit down and allow your life to be a subject of debate from people who are bringing all kinds of useless opinions but you love God why did you have the accident but you love why <laughs> joy joy forever who has killed your joy today i show you that it's an attack over something that is arriving who has killed your joy you prayed about finances your destiny helper is about to come but the devil is wrinkling your face with trouble hey they didn't pay salary i understand i understand i wanted to eat well today now that you cannot eat god you are faithful now you be God, Almighty God, you know be my Lord, you know be my Lord. Now you be God, now you be God, Almighty God, you know be my life and destiny i can't be too mature to stop believing the word no sir it is the foolishness of men to stop believing god for anything god cannot do cannot be done anything god cannot do cannot be done no
Can you just blast in tongues for one minute? Hey! Don't allow the devil to shake you. Lord of Judah, my trust is in you. everywhere inside and outside and let's begin to pray in the spirit this results we must command it results are commandable those online follow us hold hands with everybody close to you any nation day or night go ahead connect in the spirit inside outside pray that I'm teaching you and I promise you your life will surprise you we're going to take some time to pray that's why I'm stopping here I just sense that grace to pray prayer point number one I insist that I must succeed lift your voice and pray don't be quiet open your mouth everything Adam called Success is my destiny. I have decided to walk with Jesus No turning back No turning back I have decided to walk with Jesus No turning back No turning back Prophesy your desire I have decided the wisdom to walk of Jesus. Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning no back. Turning back. I have decided to walk with Jesus. No turning back. 
Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Don't think we are rounding up. We have some prayers to do. Listen. I want you to mention the areas of challenge in your life. And say, Lord, what mystery, what system in the kingdom are the results of this pain tied to reveal to me? Lift your voice and pray. Mention them. Don't keep quiet. Lord, my growth rate is slow. What is the system in the kingdom that is responsible for speed? I cry for revelation. Are you praying? Are you praying? Lord, I love you. I've seen the anointing on my life, but my finances are dying. Living from hand to mouth, what allocation in the kingdom is responsible for that result? Lord, I love you. I enjoy a healthy prayer life. My prayer life is robust, but there are no helpers in my life. What am I missing? What am I missing? Norman was the captain of the Syrian army, but, but, but he was a valiant man in war. He excelled in an area, but there was an area that was bankrupt. Show me, open my eyes. 
open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes. Keep praying. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that seeks, find. And to him that knocks, the door shall be open. We knock on that door. Jesus, the door, reveal to me. Don't stop praying. La paroto sope kato shekete ni kata. Enka la kato sakata kata. Shala parakata kaka po shokotos. Epre koto soto bakata. Makariata so sekete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number three. Every door that opened before and then closed must open again. No, oh. it must open again. No, oh. lift your voice and cry, Lord. Wherever I missed it, I asked for mercy, but that door must open again. You showed me favor once, you must show me favor again. You gave me victory once, you must give me victory again. Pray. You sent me help us once, they must appear again. My hand has tasted prosperity once, it must come back again. I enjoyed speed before, I cried for restoration. I once was a landlord, now I'm a tenant. Take me back, oh God. Restore my glory, restore my honor, restore my glory, restore my honor, restore the anointing. I used to carry the healing anointing once, but it no longer is working. Restore it, oh God. Restore the fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everyone. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. That the grace that is responsible for compelling men to apply the kingdom until they get results, may that grace be released on you now. May that grace be released on you now. May that grace be released on you now. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every area of your life where satan has taken an advantage of by the power that is in the name of jesus i force restoration i force restoration beginning from tonight i declare the mysteries that will bail you out of any trouble you are in it must be revealed to you tonight in the name of jesus and finally, I pray for you. I will keep praying this until I see it in your life. The kind of favor you have never seen. May the God I serve make it happen in your life. I release upon you the ministry of the gift of man. The gift of man. The gift of man. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are people here. Please keep standing everyone. There are people standing here. Inside, outside and many online. Who have never truly acknowledged the lordship of jesus and whilst you heard me speak the holy spirit kept speaking to you that you need a new beginning for others you have loved jesus but things have happened in your life here and there that require an encounter with god you need a rededication
our time is gone wherever you are please i know there will be people coming from outside i want to count one to five very quickly wherever you are i want you to leave your seat and boldly come here say an apostle i want you to pray for me i'm not ashamed to start afresh with jesus make your way here don't wait for someone to come before you come be the first be bold come god bless you I appreciate them they are coming they need a lot of motivation god bless you those of you coming from outside wherever you are make your way quickly bless you my dear bless you my dear quickly come stand gentlemen god bless you god bless you quickly are you coming win that war win that war make your way to jesus quickly you sang that you will serve him forever you sang that you will love him forever those coming from outside double up can you run quickly run to jesus run to jesus make that decision make that decision make that decision let's appreciate them you have one more minute and i'll pray for you one more minute and i'll pray for you are there still people coming from outside clear the way ushers help them so they come quickly clear the way for them god bless you god bless you hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much please join us very quickly thank you my brothers um i appreciate your very bold decision everybody must have a beginning with god a time when you have an encounter with him i want you to mean this sincerely from your heart you're not reciting a poem believe it and the lord will help you lift your right hand and say this sincerely and passionately say lord jesus say it again lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i come before you tonight asking you to forgive my sins asking you to cleanse me tonight jesus is lord of my heart lord of my soul lord of my body i declare that eternal life is mine i am a child of god from today and forever keep your hands lifted jesus i present to you the ones you died for I decree and declare that the grace that preserves, the grace that keeps, and the grace that builds be released upon them. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the hand of God is upon you. Let tonight be a new beginning for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Victory unto victory. That's what I speak over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for this decision. Hold on. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. And, um, Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashkana Catabranda Catacato Catabranda Catapaco Tosco to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.